Hello! Today is another book review day and this week I have been reading Long Lankin by Lindsay Barrowcroft and um, I read this one uh, after reading a review written by a friend and a colleague on her blog about this book and it sounded quite interesting. Um, my friend's name is Hannah and her blog is Hannah's Blog of Books and I will put a little linky down here so you can click on it and have a have a look-see. Um, and she's read a few books that I recommended to her and I thought I'd give it a go and read a book that she found actually quite frightening, quite haunting, quite scary um, and it sounded quite interesting so I thought I'd give it a go. So here is the blurb. Oh and by the way it's another teen book from the teen section, Young, young Adult Fiction. Um, so if that's that interests you then this is you know this is quite a good book for you anyway long lankin he's here again she whispered who who's here again listen to me he knows she's here he will hunt for her he will smell her out they all hope he's gone away but he never goes away he just waits he'll be looking for that little girl then he can rest again until the next one comes who who are you talking about long lankin she hissed, holding my collar in her dirty, veined old hands. Long Lankin. Set against a backdrop of murder, witchcraft and revenge, this eerie tale of a young girl's struggle to protect her sister from a centuries-old evil is beautifully evocative and utterly spellbinding. Um, if I'd read the blurb, to be honest, I don't think I would have picked up the book, but because my friend had um, written a good review on it, that's that's what swayed me really um, this book is interesting in in a couple of ways but I also found it quite difficult to read I'll, I'll try and explain it's 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 more easy to read than it is to explain but um, I'll give it a go um, as I probably said before teen books um, are generally the same as adult books except the main character is a young adult or a teenager or even, you know, even a child. Um, this book has a few main characters and it is divided up into sections um, voiced by three different people. Cora, Roger and Ida Eastfield. And I'll explain who they are in a second. Um, and I quite like the way that um, the narrative is divided between these three people because you get different points of view and you get to see different things through different eyes. And um, a few weeks ago, I was talk I, I run a, a writing group for teenagers at my library and I was talking to one of the girls there and asking her about what her favourite kind of point of view is when, when writing. Personally, I love first person perspective. I love to be able to write through somebody else's eyes and have their reactions to things. And she said that sometimes she writes things with where each chapter is written from a different perspective. And I thought that was really interesting. And she said she does that because if it's just written from one perspective, from one person's point of view, they have to be in every scene. Whereas if you're writing um, through different eyes, that different people can be in different scenes and I thought that was quite interesting I'd never really thought about writing that way and I was quite surprised that this book was written in a similar way to the way that um, one of my young writers writes um, so it's divided up into these three main people and, and, and you kind of see everything from that point of view um, and it starts off with Cora and Mimi and their young children Mimi is the youngest and Cora's a little bit older and they've been sent away from London to go and stay with their aunt Ida um, in a in a village kind of in the middle of nowhere really they're they're from London and they've come to this small village and there's a strange atmosphere in the village and people people don't really seem to like Ida um, there's a lot of secrets there's a lot of dark history going on and um, Ida initially comes across as a really grumpy old woman she doesn't want the children there and it and it and it feels like she's just she's just a mean mean lady you later find out why she behaves the way she does um and when Cora and Mimi arrive at Ida's um they meet um some brothers and one of the brothers is Roger so that's the three voices that we hear Cora Roger and Ida and Cora and Mimi become friends with Roger and his family and and that's that's the main part of the story is is what they get up to 
when they're exploring and doing bits and pieces. Um, and Ida is the adult voice that um, that knows everything. She knows the history of the village. She knows what's gone on. Um, so, yeah, so like I say, it's all, the story is divided up into these three voices, which I like. The thing I didn't like, and I don't understand why it was done, is that the tense changes from present tense to past tense even though the book runs in a straight chronological order it begins uh let me just see here um monday the 4th of august 1958 and it ends oh where are we oh i can't even find the last chapter bear with me i will be with you in a second please don't click off um, oh, the last chapter is extremely long. Oh, and I bet I can't find it. Stay with me, stay with me, please stay here. Wednesday, 27th of August. So it starts on the 4th of August and it ends on the 27th of August. So it's kind of a month. Um, but it jumps from the character speaking in present tense to past tense to present tense. And there's no... I can't really understand the reason for it. Normally, um, on a technical side of writing, devices like that add to some part of the story or or they help develop or build something. But they, I don't really understand why it jumps from pre present to past. Um, so I did find that kind of difficult to read because I was thinking, is this happening now? Has it happened before? I did, I, that just really, really confused me. Um, maybe there is a reason for it. If anybody does know the reason, please let me know. Um, so anyway... That aside, Cora and Mimi go to live with Ida, who insists on having the doors locked at all time, the windows locked, um, and they must never, 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 never go down to the church. Um, and what happens when you tell a child never, ever to do anything? They go and do it. And Roger's parents have told them never to go down to the church. Um, and they're just curious. They're curious as to what's, what's down there. So they go exploring, and they find little curious things like... Latin words scratched into the wood and um, kind of different, just different strange little oddities around the graveyard and around the church. And they're a little bit, you know, what is this? Um, back at Ida's house, there's a there's a scary painting of a man in the hallway upstairs that frightens the girls. Um, and we later find out that he's kind of like a watchman. He's he's not a bad guy. He's he's someone that's almost there to protect them, to to warn them of of this dark, dangerous thing that exists in the village. And the dark, dangerous thing is Long Lankin, and he steals children. So we find out that Ida isn't a mean lady who doesn't want the children to have fun. She's a loving, protective woman who is so scared of Long Lankin coming in and stealing the children that she will do whatever she can to keep them safe. So telling them not to go to the church is not because she doesn't want them to explore. It's that's where he lives. Um, he keep, she keeps the windows and doors locked because he can come in if they're open. And Long Lankin is... Dis oh, he's, he's a very strange character the way that he's described is he crawls along the ground and he's, he's more animal like than he is human um and he's he's got you know he's got claws and horrible skin and he just he comes across as a really dark disturbing character and for some reason rather than the adults telling the children what happens or what has happened in the past because children have been taken by him in the past they just they don't lie but they just don't tell the truth they don't explain what's going on and and so the children don't understand and as the story goes on you you find out how mature the children actually are when they come face to face with this beast with this creature um it's it's quite a complex twisty turny story that um everything's really connected and intertwined and um and quite frightening um although i wasn't frightened by it but i could i think that's probably to do with my age i'm a lot older than than the audience that this book is aimed at um and it's not to say i didn't enjoy the book the story was quite interesting the you know the idea of 
um, myths and legends that have their roots somewhere and you know you have to work out what's real and what's not what's being made up what's fantasy um so it is it is an interesting read um but i wasn't frightened by it because um i think being an adult you aren't scared by as many things as you would be if you were a lot younger so um it is a good story the only thing that i have to criticize it about is the um the shifting of the tenses again if there's a reason for it can somebody please let me know um but apart from that i quite enjoyed it it's you know it is it is a a strange a strange tale um that does end fairly well i won't say the ending but the ending is it, it's a nice it rounds it all up and and for a young adult book um i th i think it it's 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 a pretty good book so um if you'd like to hear any more of my book reviews or listen to me ramble on about writing advice or my own writing, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I try to put out videos each week, but that doesn't always happen because of work commitments or other bits and pieces, but I try to. So if you are interested in any of that, please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye bye.